So um, when we got disconnected, we were at Harvard Business Review and we were talking about sharing and enduring uh, is an important aspect of, uh, uh, you know, is an important attribute of, uh, you know, a good work culture that is sharing within the organization, enduring and pervasive. I said that it is a you know, culture is pervasive in nature. Culture, it permeates at various levels within the organization. If you just talk about individual level, for example, just giving you a simple example, like if you see certain values, family values, it permeates. It permeates from the from the elders to the to the children and to the grandchildren and so on. So it is a likewise, even at the corporate culture, it's pervasive. And so culture permeates at various levels within the organization. So it's enduring culture can become a self reinforcing social pattern, resistant to change and external influences, and it is implicit in nature, it is subliminal in nature of culture, which makes people hardwired to respond to it instinctively and acts as a silent language. Now, this has been practically observed in many companies where people within the organization get hardwired and are averse to change once the company loses sight of developing and maintaining a healthy work culture. Next is who are the major players in a corporate culture? The major players are, of course, the management, then the people of every department as employees, again, along with interaction with the management you know, along with interaction with the management, so the major players, the management, the people at every rung, as well as external parties, such as those who are, in example, with those in the supply chain, contractors, and so on. What are the factors that actually impact work culture? Leadership and management, of course, as I said earlier, that leadership, uh, you know, it drives values. If you remember, I just spoke in the first part of my lecture, that leadership drives values. So leadership and management, managers need to be trained as leaders. HR practices of reward system, recognition, salary, remuneration, checking out with a, a competent employee and so on. Competency is required, of course, no doubt. So regular, uh, you know, monitoring of uh, competency and having good reward system is again a key uh, to a good work culture and even such uh, you know factors impact the overall work culture because a satisfied, uh, you know, workforce would really uh, contribute their best towards achieving the goals of the organization and also towards propelling the organization towards uh, towards uh, earning profits next is the yet another factor that you know that impacts work culture is hr policies which need to be devised strategically and not traditionally in today's world next is communication policies and transparency within the organization between managers executives or manager manager or manager and higher management so again this plays a very important role in an organization work culture, corporate work culture, and it impacts work culture. How, what is the communication policy and whether transparency is maintained within the different departments and whether it is required to be maintained and if it is maintained, if it is required and so on. Next is the work environment, which comprises of physical environment as well as social environment. So this is like a recapitulation of what was not recorded properly for you. So work environment, uh, includes physical environment as well as a social environment, which includes behavior, attitude, and physical, of course, is rooms, cabins, cubicles, and so on. Now, apart from that is assessment patterns or assessment pointers. So assessment impact pointers. One is, of course, it would impact the employee productivity, employee contribution, employee behavior, and attitude. Now, a bad employee behavior, a bad attitude would, uh, you know, it would, uh, you know, punch the morale of the employee. Next is the overall impact assessment. Goals of the organization can be short-term or long-term goals. So these goals can be punctured in, in case, you know, there is a bad work culture. So overall impact assessment, see, you know, the assessment, the impact that the, that the work culture can have, it can also have a, a, a kind of either a positive impact or a negative impact over the short term or the long term goals of any organization. Next is achieving a competitive edge, dwindling profits. Thereby, it cannot be denied that corporate culture does impact even the overall development of the organization.
Next is what is the significance? But now I'm sure you will be able to answer on your own what is the significance or what is the importance of a good corporate work culture. One, of course, as we've observed in the street is that, you know, and the lecture as well, that corporate culture has a bearing upon employee attitude, behavior, and it certainly does impact the productivity of the employees collectively, which in turn does impact the competitive edge of the organization. Next is a culture can have either a positive or negative impact, as we said earlier, on an organization and this exemplifies or it uh, you know it uh, you know it magnifies the need for a healthy corporate structure next is a culture which is non aligned with people oriented principles which are devised by organizations normally will lead to a highly dissatisfied workforce and reduced loyalty so on the other hand a company that fortifies its people which strengthens its people with trained strategic work culture will certainly reap the benefits of operational efficiency and better results. So these are some of the uh, you know, significant uh, uh, factors that necessitate having a good corporate culture. Next is corporate culture within the walls of the company has a tendency to be reflected externally. As I said earlier at the beginning of my class, that any value normally tends to seep out because behavioral patterns have a tendency to seep out. It is reflected externally to the outside world. Likewise, in corporate culture, though it's within the walls of the company, it has a tendency to be reflected externally to the outside world. So this is some of the uh, you know, uh, reasons why, some of the reasons, of course, which actually necessitates having a good corporate work culture or a healthy work culture or a healthy corporate culture. What are the different corporate models? There are basically three types of corporate cultural models that has been devised so far. Then one of it is the McKinsey 7S framework, which was actually devised in 1970 and founded by Tom Peters and Robert Waterman while they were serving one of the uh, organizations called McKinsey and they were the consultants for them. And they came up with this model. And this model basically, it, uh, you know, this model actually refers to certain elements, the elements that are aware there within the organization, and it calls it as, you know, soft elements and hard elements. So they say that the unity or the, the, the unified coordination between the soft elements and the hard elements normally go to determine the, the progress of the organization. So what are these hard elements and soft elements? So soft skills, work patterns, values, which are incessantly in flexion as they, they are referred to as soft elements, while the other rewarding matters such as design strategies, policies, they can be referred to as hard elements. So what is required is that hard elements and soft elements are interdependent. Since they are interdependent, they are interdependent. And so therefore these both elements, they have to, you know, coordinate in a or there has to be a union in a balanced way and that will determine the success of any organization next is the corporate culture model or the cultural iceberg model edward t hall propounded an image that the corporate culture i mean he referred to as uh, that it looks like a shape of an iceberg and what is seen at the tip of the iceberg is is actually distinct from or different from what is beneath the iceberg beneath the you know the, the top level or the the tip of the iceberg is normally seen and the the lower structure is normally seen normally not seen by the world outside so they say that there are visible and invisible factors the visible factor is of course the tip of the iceberg what is invisible also plays a very important role in determining work culture or strategizing a healthy work culture what are those invisible factors Factors like employee grievance or uh, any uh, you know discontent among the employees or you know any uh, you know employer employee relationship behavior feelings rules internal rules and so on these are all factors that remain hidden within the structure and what is seen normally outside is like the tip of the iceberg is a vision mission strategy and so on so in this model actually an organization uh, you know can shape its culture by addressing its invisible factors by recognizing those hidden factors such as employee needs cooperation techniques etc and strategizing their way to you know towards working or building a or maintaining a healthy work structure. And the last part of it is, of course, the third model is the the um, one minute. 
is the Hofstede's model or the corporate cultural model where Hofstede actually refer to culture as a software of mind. And this comparison uh, of a mind being referred to a software, it involves, basically it means that he actually meant that uh, there is shared mental programming, there is different minds, so there is shared mental programming within the organization with differentiation, because uh, there are different people within the organization who possess different identities, experiences, and values, and then they come together and develop a culture. So interestingly, Hofstad in his study preferred to refer to an organization set up as having four layers of cultural manifestation. The first layer, as you opined, it comprises of symbols. The second layer is made up of heroes, that is those who really stand out. And the third layer is of rituals and the fourth core layer is of values. Interestingly, Hofstede, uh, you know, um, he referred, uh, you know, one minute. He referred to an organization to an onion. He said it looks like an onion as having four layers of cultural manifestation. Uh, like the first layer, again, I'm reiterating, looks like, you know, it, it refers to symbols that is normally whatever is the symbols. And next is the heroes, the third layer of rituals, and the fourth layer is of values. So the device is ideal, therefore, for conceptualizing an idyllic corporate culture, and thus is useful for companies who have just begun the journey of outlining their corporate cultural strategy. So therefore, there is a great need of having a healthy corporate culture, and then there is a need for analyzing strategically and implementing strategically towards building a good corporate culture. And, and I'm reiterating what I told you at the beginning of the class, there is a need for good leaders because leaders drive values in an organization and those values drive behavior. Behavior drives and sets up a collective culture within the organization and that culture basically drives performance and performance, good performance leads towards achieving the goals of the organization. So then what they mean is here, no doubt employees have to be competent, but Competency must unite with values of competency of an individual or group of individual or of the workforce within the organization, competent workforce, even if they are, it must meet values. They must imbibe values and display values in their behavior. And, you know, if there is a need sometimes for the organizations also to develop models depending on, you know, models which uh, reflect accountability, making the, uh, you know, the employees accountable for their behavior. So when you make an employee accountable for their behavior, so they would really stand up towards the, you know, the values of the organization. So competency must meet value. So people within an organization, they are the ones who, you know, they are the face of the organization. They, as if you try to, you know, they are the face of the organization and they also go into brand making of the organization. So therefore, there has to be a continuous effort you know, which has to be rooted, these efforts have to be rooted to measure performance, instill values, and, you know, build value-based models, build performance-based models, build, you know, accountability models, and so on. If you look around you, that, and if you have read certain magazines, they say that research has proved that companies, uh, you know, who uh, actually give importance to corporate culture, or who rather prioritize corporate culture, they are the ones who are strategically made higher profits. And there has been a stock market increase in their, in their, you know, for them as well. So therefore, companies need to prioritize strategically their corporate structure, need to monitor their corporate culture within the organization, prioritize corporate culture within the organization, and, uh, uh, you know, need to uh, instill those, uh, you know, values within the organization because their people, their people, organizational people are the brand for the organization and corporate culture certainly has an enormous impact on the value of the company as a whole. And, you know, it is like, you know, the, 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 you know, it reflects the ideals of the company to the world outside. So most companies should agree that corporate culture has to, has to, has to be strategically, uh, you know, monitored. And it, it, there is, uh, and it normally evolves within an organization and it is no doubt a significant factor. And those companies who 
conveniently fail to monitor the culture that is growing within the organization, of course, their potential would certainly take a big hit. So therefore, a good corporate culture, as we understand from today's study, is it is amply necessary. A good corporate culture or a healthy work environment is necessary for building uh, uh, or reaching the highest goal or the potential of any organization. So that's all for today's class. Uh, a gentle reminder about your assignments. Assignments have to be submitted on time and uh, get ready for the fourth chapter. So the next class will be dealing with the fourth uh, chapter. Thank you.